Fantasy Baseball Analytics 2024. It is time that we pivot hard to salary cap drafts to making that sort of transition. But but first, I I sort of have our our competitive edge. The whole thing, the whole the whole pleasure of, of fantasy baseball, I think, is there's always an edge. But listening to rates and barrels with Derek Van Riper and Eno Saris, and, and I I've got to admit, like I'm back to sleeper in the bus, back to the original pods, falling. You know, get getting my roots from Eno. If there's a coaching tree, you know, I'm I'm underneath an, an Eno tree, so I'm still paying attention there. And and they have Trevor May on that podcast. So obviously get on rates and barrels. And they want to get technical beyond just fantasy. They're really talking about pitching more because that's what Eno's into. And Trevor's a pitcher. So it's really pulling it all together and synthesizing it. But but for the first time, we we've been doing this. Let's get to somewhere fun here so that we can get started. We've been doing this for, we'll come back to this. Let me get my screen so I can manage it. Let's get up to something that's just worth just worth staring at while I just talk about this for a second. Give, it, give me this. Here we go. So we've been talking about exit velocity on barrels and and heart and shadow. And I, I've got to go through this a little bit. So let me just tease what we're going to do. I've got to go through this. I'm going to play a little bit of this pod. This is standard ADP stuff. I haven't even looked at salary caps. It's a little bit, you never get a second chance to make a first impression of salary cap prices. So for the first time, I, I honestly, I have not even taken a little tiny peek at prices for TGFBI prep. And so this is the first time I'm gonna take a peek at prices, go right through and identify some things before we, we kind of build the background for the, the next level, the 400 level of salary cap drafts, probably the third the third evolution of that. But this, this came out on a podcast because it's the first time in four years that I'm just hearing anyone in the industry discuss this particular topic. And it leads me down a rabbit hole, just so you know where we're going. We're not, we're always dealing with that. We're going to talk a little bit of pitch highlighter. We're going to get a little bit into... Because I think what's happening, there's so much on Baseball Savant. you got to deal with ex woba Let me make a quick comment here because I'm just going to graze over this because I think you're trying to figure out what's sticky and what's predictive. BA and XBA. XBA is not predictive. I, have, I think nothing of XBA. If anything, think of XBA and BA as the same thing. Just use XBA if you prefer that. I'm okay with that. Take the take the average between the two. There's no gap here. There's no he his BA was this, his XBA was this, his BA is gonna go up. I I don't see it. Same with X slug. So we don't we don't even know very well what Savant does in terms of adding outcomes to tweak its metric. I mean, I X Woba is very good. And and it and it identifies the best hitters, but it's not predictive and it falls off extremely fast before it just middles and it makes guys very hard to discern. You know, who cares? 393, 360. You know, it just really helps on like, okay, these were the top 15 players. But that wasn't hard to tell anyways. I don't know. Th this is this is your swing take profile. And this is one look at these zones and how these how these numbers are accumulated and how we're scoring players. So this has to be, we have to take a peek at this and the roots of this. But let me just, so now after teasing that, th this is what I really have to talk about because because I'm trying to put this edge out there and eventually, eventually it's going to make its way through the system. People are going to find these truth on the searches. Let's use, let's use this poor trout page here. Let's get back because I want to be able to do it as these guys flow through it. Let's get some batter and let's talk a little attack zones because that's what these guys want to talk about. Let's take some shadow. And let's look at some barrels and let's add some stats to it. Let's add some flexible. All right, here, here's, here's these guys going. Let's get to uh, one of the big topics here today. And we had a mailbag question from. I'm, I'm going to keep pausing this because I have to really dissect it because I kind of want to clarify 
and and disagree and reagree and explain some things on top of what they're saying. And this is this is a big topic in fantasy baseball. I I agree. Darren real recent discussions about using zone minus chase percentage and the seeker metric to evaluate play discipline are very interesting. I was that that's fine. Anyone would have a sense of using zone contact minus chase and and taking a gap. That's about similar things last winter. I ended up training my own simple model to evaluate swing decisions. My question is this is a call in question. So listen to the framing of this. It's about swing decisions in the shadow region, straddling the edges of the zone. This is a loaded question. Swing decisions in the shadow reason region. So they finally field this question about let's leave fan graphs zone contact. And let's enter this world of, of regions, of heart, shadow, chase, and waste. Someone's looking at Savant. These pitches are hard to hit, but also have a decent probability of being called strikes when taken. These are locations the pitcher wants to execute in. Recent discussions on Vlad Jr. A lot of conclusions there. Yeah, that's a separate thing. Pitchers want to be in, be in shadow more than heart? Yes. Some can be called strikes. Well, yes, because you can see where where it's lined up. He's making too much weak contact with these pitches, while someone like Corey Seager is also aggressive in these locations and yet is being considered the model of good play discipline. Given a player with good strike zone judgment, would you rather that player be aggressive in the shadows to maximize swings in the heart? I... That that's another conclusion. Aggressive in the shadows to maximize swings in the heart. I think what he's saying, if he's looking at Seeger, Seeger is swinging ninety one percent in the heart, but he's also swinging at shadow. He's generally aggressive, but then he cleans it up and he doesn't get he he's not very good at chase because he's swinging there as well. He has a swing tendency profile, and then he doesn't get hit on waste. So. I think he feels that what's happening is shadow and chase are going together. Hitters don't seem to really win at heart and lose at shadow. You're either aggressive or you're not aggressive. I mean, I guess I would have to look for the gap, but it's whether you're a more swing player or, or a take player. Or be more discretionary in the shadows and lose out on a few middle, middle swings. How much does it depend on contact and barrel ability? I think my model says the latter is better especially given it is correlated with chasing less, but I'm curious to hear any related thoughts or analyses. Yes. <laughs> oh, a mouthful. And Eno's going to come in here and get back on this, and I'll have to let it run for a second. But I guess how much does it matter for these other things? He he doesn't – he's kind of being coy. He doesn't want to give it away. This is Homer's – this is barrels in the shadow with exit velocities and whatnot so this is where i was explaining they, they're not going to go into this but exit velocities are lower on shadow than in the heart derek's going to mention wow like these guys are special these are the players that can turn on shadow home runs and i would say kind of get extras get get some additional home runs because Things don't have to be middle-middle. They can go out and get mistakes. And who's hitting them hard? It's the usual. It's Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber will go get you. If Schwarber's swing, you better watch out. Because Schwarber's putting them 108.5 extras. Matt Olson will get you. Matt, you don't have to be hard. Matt will get you up in the chat. So you're seeing who can get the extras. You know, and that's why Vlad, how, how, long, how far are you really going to let Vlad go in the second? I mean, I have Vlad kind of tucked in with Jordan. And Jake Berger, I mean, I think Jake Berger's emergence for very cheap, I mean, it's it's whack. 272 is not a home run everywhere. These are missiles. But, you know, but there you go. There's Jack, There's Chisholm going deep. You know, there's some superstar potential. You're looking at your catchers, Casas. It's starting to flatten out. Pete. These are extras. Here's my boy. Here's my boy, Nolan. You got Julio in the first. I took Nolan in four. 402, 382. So, guys, people are starting to find this. We're, you know, and once this all gets out and sorted through, 
It's how much of other stuff do you let go of? How much of other stuff do you rely on and focus here? And really for me, you're, you're looking for differentiation. I have to pick apart, you know, something to make me want to buy, to make me own a guy in salary cap. And this will probably be just a little tangent to salary cap issue number one is opportunity costs. I like 30 players. I like 50 guys. I like all the prospects. I like 20 arms. I don't have room for all of them. So, yeah, I do have to make a decision. I'm not just going to go where the winds send me on how I fill in the roster positions. Uh, we have to... We have to look at the opportunity cost because when I take one of these guys to fill my outfield, now I'm I can't take another person. So selecting three outfielders is difficult of who you're missing out on and how right you want to be in the spots. Why it's important to fill your infield because that's the, that's that spot. And this year, really, it's building through your UT and into your bench for injuries. Don't expect guys to make it building a plan to use every single roster spot as, as a playable player. Like let, let that be your problem. So, all right. I think I, I think I've teased this. Let, let's hear. The, your slugging ability is key here. I think because we've been hearing so much about damage and slug and power and ISO and, and trying to get through all of this. And that's why I'm like, just, just stop. Just stop. Come come over here. Put all of that away. And just look at these exit velocities on the primus purest barrels. I'm going to switch back to heart. So now if you got to separate, you got to take the heart ones and add them to the shadow ones and combine these guys. But let's string them out to heart. Hitting them, hitting them extra hard. Who's doing these? Who needs middle middle? See, I didn't I didn't see Matt Chapman's name up in Shadowland, but here he is in the heart and he's he's sort of going for value. I think, did he get a job somewhere? So, you know, these are here. And then here's my thing is go to the, sort by the velocity and look for the bulk. Look for the bulk and check on the distance. Here's Otani. It's gonna be madness. It's gonna be madness. Can I get a discount on Otani who won't get her pitching who's just gonna DH? And a salary cap. This is why I'm gonna. I I this is my issue. I already have we have I have a team and I have double cruise missiles, Eli, Ellie, and O'Neill cruises, cruise cruise. Can I make a team and not do it? Can I pry myself away and force myself to do or do I have to? Because I'm gonna feel but I don't care. This isn't, it, it doesn't, we're getting reinforcement because if he makes contact. It's gone 110, 396. Loft. The Ellie story just keeps getting better and better. Here's the go. Pete, they're going. Vlad, one of these seasons, he's going to add a couple, a degree, two degrees. And it's going to, he's going to be a new player. Here's my luxury piece. Here's the Royce Lewis hype right here. You found it. Heart. Heart barrels. Pure. Wilson, best catcher in the game. Olsen, Berger. Little bit longer on heart than 175 in shadow. I mean, so just... Th this is where it... Th that's, where it that's where it go. Let, let me see we ran some numbers and we we looked at some of the available research. First off, my point was, don't keep double counting in in ISO and slug. Look at what this metric is. ISO ignores singles. Slug is weighted averages, singles, doubles, triples, home runs. There's not much triples. This is a doubles and home runs game. Don't keep counting them. Over and over again, that would like be like me saying, "Ah, he's good at OVP, and he also takes walks." That they're they're correlating. So I'm digging into the base metric. Count it once. Swinging the heart is really good. This is the heart of the zone. This you know, it's basically middle middle. I totally disagree with Eno here. That's why. That's where I had to stop. 
it, it's not it's not middle middle. If you go back to this thing, I gotta go find I gotta find somebody's swing take profile to get you this description. And, and here here's the here's the giant problem. I believe this is why I had to take you in this rabbit hole, and I think it will all pay off. Once I'm just gonna give us some price some price analysis. The area for attack regions, sure. Each region show a frequency of pitches seen or shown, as well as the rate of swinging or taking in that region. That's fine. That's fine. Here's the swing take percentages right here. You got to look at compared to league average. These balls, I want you to see this 10%, 2240. The size of these balls this 73, 53, 23, 6, the league average number. It's just, is he a little better than league average? A little worse. So here's Gunnar Henderson. A little extra heart, a little less shadow. Not on the chase, not on the waist. Sure. But where Eno is calling this middle, middle, this is where this developed. The five, five is middle, middle. Five is five is middle middle. They they put nine zones in here, and the plate. They this is the diagram. I mean, the, the plate looks like it's, you know. So I don't agree with how he's calling the heart. I think umpiring expands this because what you have is probably the black, and then you have a situation about umpire zones, but really. I've always had, I want to control this. Ultimately, the waste has become meaningless. There's nothing there. So erase that, push this in, and give me an extra zone. You know, if Eno wants middle, middle, chop these in half and carve middle, middle out. And give me another layer in here. So if I was ever able in the search tools, I'd look for this to like, let me move these lines around the way I want to move them. And then let me search the pitches over them. Because this is arbitrary, and they came up with this because of this. Each reason represents something real in baseball, this person claims. The heart is pitchers throw about 25% of their pitchers he, pitches here. Batters will generally swing at 75%. Okay, the shadow zone is area on both sides called pitches are basically 50-50 balls and strikes. That doesn't help me. I mean, they did that for convenience to the numbers, to the data set. Where do we draw the line? Get a 50-50. <laughs> Why? That makes it suck. Put the 50 on one side and the other 50 on the other side. It, it's fine because shadow is worse than heart. So I can deal with these two comparatively. But shadow zone sucks. And I think that's what this person is noticing that Swing, a lot of this is useless. I mean, I think swing take is like about as useless as last year's batting average, you know, because because of Babbitt. So the chase region and you're due 25%. So they think this makes a nice pie, 25, 50, 25, 10. And that that's a cute way to divide this and that that's how we've gotten these regions. And that's why every year, I'm having to deal with this. So here it is, 26, 44, 22, 8. 75, about 50, about 25, 6, 10, whatever. These at, uh, you know, they just wanted this to hold, so we're backing into it. But this is the other part. Every pitch is assigned a run value based on its outcome. Ball, strike, home run, et cetera, as detailed here. So we're, we'd be back to that other chart, but that's all Babbitt dependent. And they're not giving me the BABIP, so I can't correct it. I can't I can't correct for who's hot. There's more detail here, attack regions. Here it is kind of here. You know, you could read through this. You can click in on how they're scoring these and what they're... I, that's fine. I, I'm not going to argue with that. That stuff all makes sense. The part on that that's an issue is that walks... Getting on base is so important to generating runs is why we came up with OBP because guys that, you know, this ability to take and to be on base because it's hard to get hits. Grounders are hits. Pop-ups are hits. We, but barrels are, are what goes in. And then I'm going to share with you another little layer here. 
trying to do this for the, for the first time. This is the pitch highlighter. So here, rolling your thing over here. These are Corey Seager's barrels, 106. Look at this exit velocity change here. That's his overall on all his hits. Here's his barrels, 106. His batting average on barrels is 0.746. Of 60 barrels, he put 29 out. He put half of them out. But I'd like to see his exit velocity. The other thing, solid contact is fine. The batting average is 47. But it's flares and burners. You know, more location driven. These have a really good batting average. So that's, that's sort of the next layer I want to peek at because there's a lot of volume here. My guess is, is that flares and burners plus solid, you know, these kind of round out that 95 plus number where you see guys with a lot of hard hit. But that's the thing. I don't I don't even care about hard hit anymore because of how how much I prefer barrels as home run predictors. So I grabbed I grabbed Corey. I just want to do it right now. I mean, because I also want to see did I get Gunnar Henderson here? Because I'm thinking a lot about Gunner. There's Gunner 106, 146 pitches, 24 were home runs. His solid is 100. His flares are 97, 9. So I think maybe hitting a little harder than Corey overall. But you wouldn't see that if you go into something like swing take profile. And so as I was going through, and that, that's why I have it all up here. After you deal with other percentile rankings and you go, oh, well, you know, I this this is what happened. I used to look at these. This 15 run value, it's it's very hard to make any sense of this. And they didn't have a swing take leaderboard until a couple seasons ago to even tabulate these guys. So you had to go in and kind of peek. I don't think they knew what it meant. And then run value, it's plus 18 on runs, minus 9 on take runs. Yeah, because you don't want to take in the heart. That's a strike. In the shadow, just not getting good hits. But then here's the weird thing in chase. All these balls end up adding up heavy on getting towards walks. And so you're getting a lot of run value from... And Eno and that they're about to get into this. You're getting run values in shadow and even in waste for just spitting on it. More dominant than the player hitting. And th that's kind of a, I think that's a sign about how bad swing take profiles. But let, let me go back to these guys because I, I, we have. It's expanded a little bit, but it's middle, middle. Um, you know, all the good. numbers are great there. And, um, you know, we have a reader, Dominic, is D-O-M-I-N-I-K-K-E-U-L is his Twitter handle on Twitter. He uh, found that batters who, like, the batters who swung the most at the heart and had, uh, had like, a decent ISO, so he always has a sort of, do you have power component to it? The people that swung 45% or more. But he's grabbing, he's grabbing ISO. And if I grab eggs of velocity... We're we're kind of going for the same thing, but it's what what metric he wants to look at. Let me just make sure I got on swing take while he was talking about this. Did I lose the whole thing? All right, let's just do Corey's face here. Cause this is this is what we're dealing with. And there's there's stuff in here. I use it for pitching. I'll show how it's volume oriented because of, you have to remember, because of those outcomes, because I can't strip the BABIP off of it, th this can be really inflated from BABIP. Or at, in the heart, had a 113 WRC plus, people who swung under 30. This is wild, you know, connecting it to WRC plus. I mean, go ahead. 5% had a 97 WRC plus. So there is such a thing as two passes in the heart of the zone because if you have barrel ability, you should be swinging at those pitches. So we do like swinging at the heart of the zone. Yes. Now we're looking at the shadow zone. Yes, agree, agree. We can all agree. Shadow zone is that gray Soda. area. The strike zone is the green box if you're, if you're looking heart. on YouTube right now. Um, and the shadow area 
shadow zone right. straddles that strike zone. It's generally where pitchers want to pitch. If you look at any location plus model, any location model, they're rewarding pitchers points for being able to pitch in these areas. It changes a little bit by count, by pitch type, but that's generally where they want to be. Now, we then looked at called strikes. So if a batter doesn't swing at those pitches, they are called strikes 49% of the time in non-two-strike counts. 49% of the time. So basically it's 50-50 if you let it go that it's a ball or strike. What really surprised and that's you know describing what I just looked at to you that that's he he's not identifying the problem with how the zone was made yet he's just sort of describing it's me and I did this because we were had this back and forth when we got on here this is what a batter is doing on balls a non two strike pitches in the shadow zone I gotta let him keep going I mean. 14 batting average, 365 OBP, 492 slugging. Now we took out two strike counts, so two strike counts would occasionally I do like you know, you know, we'll just get a little granular, you know, picking the count because we we got into counts this year. I like let's go back to it. Oh oh and one one leverage. That's where all the money's made. Eno's in here and you saw those numbers. two O's. That's the one favorite pitcher. Yeah, you get breaking balls and stuff. But before you get to a two strike count, and the reason that we wanted to separate out two strike counts is What's here? two strike counts. You're battling. You should probably swing at shadow zone because the the the. Who knows? See, this is where it just gets the philosophy. I, I gotta get back to Van Riper's part here. Four ninety five. That's getting on base. I don't know those swings. In fact, true, yeah. truly like elite hitters because everybody hitting else, it hard. Yeah. I'm sure Van give me a little. Yeah, here. so everybody else had a had a harder time on those. So I would say you know, I'm a bias going into this. I was a little surprised by the numbers on what batters do in non two strike counts in the shadows. <laughs> the original question made me think that here maybe goes. there's more value in swinging at shadow zone pitches if you're good. <laughs> So yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was kind of what I thought. I was like, okay, so, part. Yeah, yeah. so like, exit I velocity see, on barrels. Maybe I want to see zones. barrels in the shadows. There you go. He said it. Ball I, in the right angles. What? He said it. I want to see barrels. <laughs> He's gonna blow his mind. Did you just start this? I've been listening to you guys every. You're gonna look at barrels. Let's do. Let's combine them. Let's do heart and shadow. Let's see what we got. They're hitting stuff that's not in the heart of the plate. Oh no! no. And so I just—he doesn't. He did. He wanted to look at the. He was looking at the first one. And that simple search, and it spits out a list of pretty much all. Simple search. It took a long time to figure out the search is a mess. Good players like if you're yeah. using a lot of barrels and you're doing that from the shadow zone, you're probably good. That leaderboard, just for anyone who cares, Austin Riley, most in the league last year. <laughs> it's, it's like the whole. It's my probably the. My leading edge. Anyone who cares. Yeah. Th this channel. 29. Uh, championship Ocon, channel. Randy Rosarena, Matt Olson, Freddie Freeman, Adelis Garcia, Teoscar Hernandez, Devers, Betts, Acuna. That's your top 10. Yeah. Those are all really good players. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you're not telling those guys not to swing it. I mean, really good players is what you need out of your baseball statistic. So when you sort it top to bottom... We see weird out guys like you're not good. I don't want it. You know, that's why you feel good about this, or you can feel good about barrels. Shadows Of course not. And I you think about 30 barrels. The interesting thing is if you go a little further down the list, you start to see some other names like Anthony Santander, mm -hmm. Jake Berger, Nolan Jones, mm -hmm. uh, Spencer Torkelson. Look at the distances, Derek. Look at the distances and the exit velocities. That's what's really gonna get you going. That's what's gonna get who did who did a lot of them here. Oh, that I'm on the low end. I was like, where why are they not coming up? Giancarlo, who Matt Walner's flat. Look at him. God. We we we've been we we yeah, have to like Jordan's remind there up fifteen as well. Florida, is right? 17, why is he going Solaire. that low? It's a little bit that that four ninety five slug. It's always right? been it's there. Like, okay. Never leaves. If I take. 
I could get a ball. But if I'm a slugger and I hit this, I could I get like if my slugging percentage is expected is over 500, you know, or gets you know closer and closer. The closer that gets to one, you know, then I want that base. <laughs> I'd rather have that base. So I think the closer your package is towards slugging, the more you want to swing at shadow zone, and the closer you are to kind of a slap happy, you know, I think you kind of want to take in the shadow zone. You sent me some stuff that, that Dominic had, had tweeted before the show too. One of the that's it. That's it. So the edge, the edge is evaporating, guys. So that's you know, that's it. It's out. It's out. Well, you know, I don't know. You know, I'm not gonna just we can't all just be saying the same thing. You know, Eno, Eno and Derek basically cracked the case quietly, but it's all there, it's all gonna be found. I mean, answering the poor the poor kid's question. I'm looking at Gunnar Henderson. I'm looking at is this the top of this list? Here's Seeger. So Seeger K to BB. Seeger doesn't strike out much. You know, that's the thing. That doesn't show up in swing take because the count's not there. Maybe that's Eno's issue. 84 58. The person I want to keep saying his name and skyrocketing on is Gunnar Henderson. I mean, here's Gunnar. He's striking out. He's walking a little bit, but he's swinging away. We saw in his swing take, it almost looks better than Seeger's. So you can really, I don't want to say you can find nothing there, but it's, it's highly problematic. So when you search this, you know, maybe he picks Seeger because he's busiest in the heart because he's swinging so much. And yes, he gets docked a little in the shadow. But so do many other good players. Judge, Julio, Robert, Marcel, all paying the price with poorly hit balls in the shadow. Gorman, Riley. But at least they're productive here. All right, let's look at the shadow. Well, Man, I forgot about this. It's Nolan Jones. This is mind by I just it's Nolan Jones somehow getting other stuff. Jordan, the ma the average master, Shohei, Mookie, and then it really goes away. But these are these are good hitters. If you're control if you're handling your business in shadow, not many people are. So it's worth looking at it, but you have to have the whole package. So I don't care that Ryan O'Hearn is good there because He's chasing, he's wasting, you know, maybe it's fluky. He's not good as an overall package. You know, Bichette and Rosarena, other flaws. Here's a Rosarena. Well, he's not, not hitting the ball. He's sitting on stuff. You know, again, outcome-based, this can, this can jump all over the place. Chase, not swinging at stuff. Look at Soto. You'll see the walk. This is, we'll go with walk rates. These are eyes. These guys all catch walks because they're not out here. They're not swinging at it, and that gets you points. And waste stays flatter because pitchers aren't pitching to waste, and that's why the number isn't there. These are accumulated, but this is what's weird. you got to sort it by pitches because that's opportunity to be productive. And this is where I kind of claim, like, Matt saw a lot of balls. Matt's run value is going to go down if he only sees this many pitches next season or you like people that are productive on less pitches so I like a Freddie Freeman you know Torkelson's got some work to do I took him with not looking Torkelson not looking good at swing take for how much I love him Freddie Freeman here on less pitches Mookie Betts same lineup I mean here's Julio less I mean how unbelievable was he You're looking for a big jump for Julio to go from 26 to I mean, where does that even put him? Taking him two? I mean, not by swing takes, metrics. So that's a little something to look at there. Gunnar Henderson. All right, I think that's it. So you, as, you, as you sort through all this, you, you have the different metrics to deal with. Getting a feel for some players. I want to show, because the pitch highlighter is where you've got to go here. To just check real quick on that exit velocity and see how they're doing. I guess my my last little story, this is something 
that I've been wanting. I don't think I ever got back to this, but I pulled up old Clayton Kershaw. And Clayton Kershaw has been with me since the early, early days. We've been winning fantasy championships together and just being a truther here with his kind of game. And I've watched a lot of Kershaw on film, watching Dodgers games late, watching all of his starts and trying to see what's happening here. And the part that's missing, if we're going to add one more piece to heart, shadow, chase, and waste, and the black is the umpires in here. This is where the ump is. And our Aaron Novas, our legacy pitchers, I think that it might be happening a little bit with, with Webb, is that umpires falling in love, umpires getting giving the benefit of the doubt to people. You hear about the rookie treatment for Vlagro Jr. as a hitter. I, I pitchers, I mean, I remember when an Atlanta Braves pitcher was with an umpire was not giving him high strikes and he lost it. And he went to the dugout and smashed his fist because he was so furious at like where these zones were moving. And so I caught this one season and I could almost put it in the you can look at the metrics here. And this is probably my best example of it. Is this is Clayton Kershaw? Let me get down to his plate discipline. Right, here he is. Swinging strikes. Swinging strike. Clayton Kershaw over his career. So all of a sudden, around 2014, he jumps up to a 14-2, 15 15-3, This is very interesting. You know, you, you think his stuff is diminishing. Look, just catch back to these ages and just note 2021, 16.7 swinging strike. In 2021. What? You know, and I kind of feel like I caught the umpires. I caught him this season. I caught, well, I caught him doing it. It's just hard to believe that he would reach his peak, get through his most innings, his best Ks, sort of age, go through injuries. And then what, what kind of stuff did he have to turn back the clock and have like the best swinging strike essentially of his career i mean walk rates were always low but he had been more microscopic he's somewhat microscopic there in 2021 let's look at it do we have the pitch arsenal i think we can change this this pitch tracking is coming in here he is leading slider and see this i wonder if this could be any darker where he's landing this this dot this stuff down here this Four seamers over here. Okay, curveballs high here and here. This is how he's working in 2021. Where is this pitch tracking? Come on, come on. Give me, give me some pitch tracking. Essentially, Kershaw was coming out, getting out on that edge, on that paint. And you could you could see on the prompter with you know you guys are gonna get to me, aren't you? You could see it on the prompt prompter that it it wasn't really over the plate. It was pretty wide. I mean, it's one thing to control to be living in the paint, but the combination of where he was locating, it it was impossible to hit. So what, what is a guy going to do if the slider is so far off the corner? Can't give it to me. The slider is so far off the cor corner that if you swing at it, you're just going to chop it into the ground or you have no chance. I mean, it's not a hittable. It's not a hittable. Gosh, I can't believe that's not going to come up. I'll close all these windows if I have to. It's not really a hittable pitch down there. I guess I'm going to have to just do it with the visuals. But anyways, you would see that Kershaw had no velocity. He had no, there was no better spin. There was, there was nothing on it. There was nothing scary about the pitch just besides he was locating and the fact that it was Cy Young, Clayton Kershaw, and the umpires were just handing him called strikes. And then he got guys rolling. So now he's living... He's living on this little sliver of, of plate 
where he's getting called strikes and then guys start going. They start having to chase this stuff. And look, there's no wild dots. I mean, the curveball can miss from time to time. The slider's in real tight. The four-seamer kind of getting up on him. He was just surprising, guys. He was leading slider. He threw him half of the time. It was every pitch. It was just sliders, sliders for called strikes, sliders for swinging strikes. It, it was so heavily apparent. I mean, nobody was pitching like that in terms of control, guys coming in with the hard stuff, up, down, moving around. Is it here? Is it there? No, it was every game Kershaw came out and he was living on that corner. I can't believe the pitch tracking won't come up. That's boggling my mind, but let's let's do this first impressions because I want to take I want to take some of what we saw, TJFBI, some of the new news. Are you are you guys hearing about people? Devin Williams gone. What round is he going? Gone. You know, my my boy Gavin Williams, who I missed in the mid rounds for the for for Cleveland, injured. Garrett Cole, Garrett Cole, we started this. I was like, what? Garrett Cole, why is he going so high? It's, it's diminished stuff. I mean, I, I guess the more I see it, this spin rate drop, this diminished stuff, and it's making me nervous about one of my picks, Christian Javier. Diminished stuff is like something is broken. So you're, you're, it's too tired. It needs a rest. It's snapped. It's done. It's toast. It's cooked. It's stretched. Something has gone wrong and your stuff diminishes. It's, oh, if you can just get it back and recover, but it seems like the whole process, the machine has to fall apart and be built back up. You know, maybe these guys should take full years off, just a full healing year for the arm. When you see them in his stuff, as soon as spin rates go, and I think that's where I got it, listening to some Trevor May, just about pressures and moving stuff, so... Yeah, the guy's been throwing the same pitch, and suddenly the torque isn't on there. Usually something in the kinetic chain is sort of sort of giving way. You got it. All right, here we go. Literally have not even taken a peek. If I was building a ladder, here it is. What are they actually going for? Ronald in a class of himself pushing up 20 bills to a 71 tier of his own. So there's a lot of fight for that. You know, that could be any number. 65, 70. He's in, he's going, you're paying a special price. Bobby Witt, Julio, Corbin Carroll, all premium. It looks like we're seeing a 50 tier and then bowing out on $260. And I think, you know, going over this, finding value, looking for 4X return, I want to, we want to talk, think a lot about that multiplier, that DFS multiplier. And basically, upside, hot, hot, hot. I, I've, I've picked teams where I'll just buy that. You know, we've done that. We've tried, let me see how much he costs. People could be in love with some of these players and feel that they have to get them. There could be a stars and scrubs person who's just Julio's their guy this year. So these numbers can really go up. There's a lot of interest there. I don't, I don't want to buy it. I liked Bobby last year when I, we were getting him for value. Um, Julio when he was free, you know, guys for value, but now they're they're going pretty high. You know I'm out. Um, Freddie here. That's that's really got to be your build. That's intense. So people are paying for certain. You're paying for last year's stats. At this level, you've got to think about Shohei for your first one. If you want to need a 50 piece, I know the UT the UT is kind of gets crimped up, but it's Shohei. You'll be fine there. Tucker, that's if that's your first piece, you can go 45. I probably maybe here. I think this is legacy cash. I'm concerned that Judge's toe concerns me a little bit, but the power is massive. I mean, there's quite a discount with Aaron Judge and go and use your 10 and get some Astoria Ruiz or something, put it to something else. See see what your 
what your two player value is versus your one player and if you should break them apart. That's a lot. And then we see kind of your first step down of uncertainty. Uncertainty. People aren't really sure about this value. They feel like they're out of the first round. You start to see the first kind of discounts kick in. That's value. Could be your first pick. Same with Riley. I think Harper is a little expensive this season. I think that's just good old Harper price. Harper just does not maintain the games right now. Cole's value is going to disappear. Corbin Burns, first ace. 32, maybe that's suppressed. I bet in real action it's going for more than 32. Devers, P, Simeon. There's not enough excitement here for me. It, it gets very uncertain. I find a lot of these numbers to get very uncertain very quick. 27, is that it? Is that all it's going to be? It's going to be hard to say no to some Ellie De La Cruz for $27, $3. I like Michael Harris, 27 6 I think that's a lot. We got to go to the individual. We got to go to the individual positions to make sense of this. We will start it at starting pitching. <clears throat> Oh, man, in this first tier. So there's Yamamoto, no discount, but I do like him there as an ace. I can't do Gaussman, and I think some things have flared up. I can't do Gallon. Pablo, $20 ace, sure. I prefer Pablo over Kirby, well over Nola. I would never do this. Freed, I would never do. And then you're in on Tariq, and I wouldn't do Logan either. Health issues, walk issues. I don't think Fromber's even... Has the stuff to be here at $18. Grayson's my first youngster to take serious. So people are nervous on pitching. People don't know what to do. Yuri is pretty cheap. That's probably more expensive in real life. So your Yuri, your Bobby Miller. Cease got traded to the pods. Better park for him. He's going to have a huge bounce back. You, you're going to be really fine with Cease here. Regans, uh, you know, my usual, usual stuff that we like. No, I don't know Walker Bueller's just time to Bueller's timetable. Radish baby Bybee doesn't send me gray. Bieber sale Shane Hunter Green. Wow, these are cheap in salary cap. So money is really money must just be disappearing out of drafts for there to be nothing left for Hunter Green and Chris Sale. Opportunity cost though. How many starters? What starters are you putting? Can they be your one two? Can you lead there? Do you need Rodon this year? If you're nervous with Rodon, how much do you back him in with? Who's next here? Javier, I just did, but that was in a deep. That was late, late, late in a deep league. Pepe, I'm in on both. You see me. Mm, big gap in here. Big uncomfortable zone here. Bryce Miller is good here. Gavin's looking hurt. And Managa's going to be... Better than advertised there for 2006. But then it's Mason Miller's. He's going to be relieving fat. People don't know what to do. How deep is this? So I'm going to have to tighten up some of my spring news for some guys. Here's Skeensy. In a salary cap, you know, be prepared to pay full value, full prospect value, projection value. Skeens isn't going to stay. This must be old, weighted down. Skeen striking out Holiday in the breakouts game, breakout scrimmage, spring training games that they've been having. This isn't 1 6. This is 10 15. So you're going to have to 15 20. You're going to have to build it into your budget. Cutter's getting hype. Harrison's getting hype. All the young guys down here. I got to look at Abbott. I didn't see it. Scherzer, if you can wait. You know my guys late. Lance Lynn, God, that dried up awfully fast. So you have to put a staff together in there that you can work with. What gets lost in the average pricing is how some of the money will move. Look at this $50 first round tier. See what you got 20 to 30 because 20 to 30 fights, Nolan Jones can easily go for 30 or 35. You have to be prepared. Robert, Michael Harris, Nolan Jones, Adolis, they're all going to go in this, depending on who likes them on any given day. I'm not, 
I'm not there with Bellinger. Charles Holmes, that's a lot of love for how injured he gets. And Schwarber's going in value. I mean, Schwarber is so significantly more power laden than Steer and Yelich. And I don't really believe in Josh Lowe. This really falls apart. I want no part of Cassianos. Brian Ramos, I believe, is a good player for average, but I don't want no part of that. And I like Evan Carter an awful lot. A story for the speed. This is value. I'm in no on Jordan Walker for flatness. Who else? Ozuna. Outfield eligible here. <laughs> so many barrels. Riley is trying to loft the ball. Haven't seen it yet. And Wyatt Langford, the darling. He's just skyrocketing up draft boards. Looks like the best player on the hitter on the Texas Rangers. All the prospect stuff is playing up massively. Get involved. Can I come up with outfield? Let's go to first base. Who can we tolerate in our infield? Matt, yes, 39 is a lot. I don't want to pay it. I'd rather play bad for 30. Oh, Nolan Jones is dual eligible in Yahoo. Look at that. I'll put Nolan at 1B. Just make some room for the outfielder. Slide him right in. We'll have to figure out if we can tolerate Casas. You know, and this is where we would do it. Let's just, since we can't have Kershaw's pitch pitch mix, ooh, can we can we use Casas? Part of me says I should, but I haven't found it on the inside. For a salary cap situation, a 6'5", round one, 24 years old, Reds. We're going here. So I'm not, I'm not even going to swing take profile. That's how the outcomes, how they hit, if you gave them run value based on where the balls went, it's not even worth going back into it. Let's just go to what we got to do here. 107. 40, 40 barrels, 21 home runs. 107 exit velocity is very good. As solid as 105.2. Those are hard. And his flares aren't that hard, but he's got a lot of solid contact on 23 pitches. Only two of those went out. So notice solid doesn't get out the yard because it's got certain flaws, either too lofty, too low. It's the barrels that get out. So, okay, okay. I mean, it's interesting because it's so cheap, but I'm a believer in Casas of all these. Walker can do it. It's just boring to me. Casas, you can get it done. And I, I think Torque, let's see the Torque's turn. I mean, we've already looked at his barrel stuff, but let's just see what we got here. Little smaller. He's a one one, same age as Casas. Smaller, smaller guy. Torque. Can you rely on Torque? Because this is like rely on. You have to buy the player. I mean, if there's nobody else, I had a good team when I took Mookie last year and put him at second base because there was nobody else. And Bryce is just not going at much of a discount. I I probably pay up. Will I go down to Pete. You want Peter Vlad? You have to kind of make this decision unless you really think you're going to stack these guys and them together. I wouldn't just let it blow in the wind. Where did he go? Hang on, let me see. There's Torque. So 104.9. Those are softer barrels, but he did 62 of them and 28 of them are home runs. So he's doing a lot. The solid contact was decent. Players and burner, burners. So not hitting as hard as Casas, but hitting more of them. Just something to deal with here. I mean, a bench, I can, Carnacion Car Strand as a bench. Asking Tina. Mm, I don't know, so Jammer Can Candelario, Cincinnati lost a player due to Noeli. I think it's Noel V did a PED sus suspension. So there's a little more time in this infield. And I saw some pop there, but that's flyer. I can't play him at one. So one is one doesn't look great. I, I've got to get something. I've got to get a keep, keep a 30 piece set aside. Get your favorite guy. 
If you want to punish somebody, get two of them. Put somebody in the UT and in a Yahoo format and not a deep league and just stack them up. If you're not gonna, you're not gonna respect Tristan Cassis this year. That's a mistake. Tristan Cassis is a big boy. He's hitting the ball very hard. He's got some line. The Red Sox are not just gonna try to not be good this year. I've come across to two B. Mookie, the certainty, 50 piece. Simeon getting the suddenly the most respect he's ever gotten this year. Like we love him now. Albie's still thinking, you know, he's in the lineup, the Ronald stuff. Wow. That will too big. That almost shocked me. I'm not gonna be able to do my builds like that. Matt McLean. More hype with my coming out of Matt McLean, like the makeup, he's infectious, he just superior plate discipline. Does he really have superior plate discipline? Matt McLean. So the I think the makeup has to be great because he's 5'8. Round one seventeen. Pedigree, pedigree. Let's see. Check out this pitch highlighter quick. Is he getting is he getting some wood on anything? 27, 1038. 27 on the 12 one out. Just just be realistic. You know, just keep it in keep it in mind. And then talking about how much play discipline. This is what we're talking about. Yeah, he's not swinging because he's not swinging at shadow. Oh, great. But he's leaving 12% of heart on the table. I mean, we like that he is taking a lot of pitches and swinging at more, you know. I, I guess that's play discipline. Take, because get on base from, from that perspective. But I'm still kind of... I'm not doing 21. No way. No way. I'm going to go get something premium. I'd rather, you know, I just, I, I'm i there with Gelov. I'd rather go Gelov. Hassan Kim. That's not who I'm thinking of. Ketel. Second base is, I would love it. I don't know what it's going to actually go for, but I'm very happy with Gorman 3-8, three, three, Gorman 10-15. I'd rather just play Gorman, have the bombs. I think Morel's going to blow up. So this is a miss value. So Morel's always had the power. They have a new coach. We think he might slide into a better position, an upside pick. But you have to have room for him. Where are you going to play him? Are you going to play him at two? Can you start him at two? Can you trust that? It's a nice flyer. It's a nice bench thought. Maybe a UT guy, but I don't want to live on it. Without seeing the situation, Edouard Julian is very good late to fill in. And Cole Keith. Are they going to write about the money? Cole Keith got paid. They haven't, Cole Keith hasn't played. And I believe it's something like 90 for eight years, 90 mil eight years, because they've seen enough of Cole Keith and they said, we're going to lock you up. Cole's been locked up. So I don't think that that's the value either one for. We'd have to change the dates. But all the prospects are flying up the boards. And I think that's one of the things about baseball most interesting is like people are saying, don't look at spring training. They're, but really it means like don't be completely dumb about spring training numbers because everyone's learning spring training. Everyone's looking at velos and everyone's looking at who's hitting. I mean, it's the same game you're about to, you know. So it's hard to say not to look at them. I like Riley. I could never with Jose here. I think Riley heads above. And so this gunner, as I look for a way to to do something besides cruise cruise, and I shouldn't look too much harder, is that is to put gunner in a UT to go cruise cruise and gunner. The gunner shooting the cruise cruise. Because I think 25-8 is a pretty good value for what's going to probably be a superstar here. And he's hitting very hard, very well in spring. And he's a total stud, so I like that. Machado's safe. 
steer again. What what is going on with steer? It, I guess for me, if they haven't shown up from the way I look at it, 511, 26. At your first base? I mean, first base eligible? Where's the best place to play Spencer Steer? Second base. That's where you want to be playing your Spencer Steer. One, two, three, six. I'm all set. 30 pitches, 19 home runs. I mean, that's good. What do we have? A good launch angle? Launch angle's 15. Okay, launch angle's sweet. Was it limited games? What's the play disc look like over here? The other thing that no one wants is that the way Savant explains their play discipline, they use zone swing, zone contact, chase, chase contact. But they don't describe it as shadow. So I wonder why. I don't know what the zone is because they're using a different term. Okay, but it's okay. That's good. Chase the whip. Okay, okay. I mean, Steer looks like a good little, I mean, a good, a good hitter, a good taking stuff. Is he taking stuff? I mean, maybe you just like to look. Maybe that's why you like Seager because you know at least Seager is gonna be swinging the bat, and he's just kind of taking stuff. And he wasn't productive in that. So there's, I'm not gonna be doing it in that Cincy. I don't know what's gonna happen there. Bregs, there's Royce. That's not bad. You got to be ready to play Royce at 3B. Maybe that's a UT spot. Give you some backup with the cruises. But for 15 and Gunner at 25, I can probably find 10 bucks for Gunner. I... Nolan, that's that safety. That's that legacy certainty price there. Josh Jung, that's some like last year just lingering hype. I think it'll be good. I, I saw a little bit of pop, but not for there. Yandy disrespected down here for 10, but that's something. Gorman again, Jake Berger, total disrespect. And the Welby Marte is the one I think got suspended. I got to look at Michael Garcia. I'm not missing Michael here. Something curious about Michael. Just going to jump over to Fangrass real quick. Just see if I can get those quick prospect scores here. Let me go. 24, 6 feet. Never hit more than 10, 15 pounds in the minors. One year with 24. I'm already, I'm already not doing well. It took 23 bags last year in 500 plate appearances. I'm, no, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. There's your giant with Candelario. Just Ben, Stash, and Cole Keith, if anything, if he's ever still there. So third and then short. Really exciting spot. That's what I'm saying. Get these shorts. Tuck them in there. So oof, Bobby, Mookie, Trey, and Seager getting money out and coming in behind with Ellie. So Ellie's not going to be the most expensive. He's not charging that round one. Not this season. I mean, that's a lot of money. 60 is set aside, maybe 70, 80 to get Ellie and Gunner line that infield. Oof, Abrams. Oof, 25 for Abrams. My goodness, to get those bases. Gosh, that's a lot. But I I probably prefer it over Bichette or McLean. Horner, you can't wait on Abrams to get Horner. Horner's going for the same money, 19. <laughs> O'Neal Cruz, this, I mean, tell me how it's happening. 18? Behind Horner and, and Bichette? <laughs> so it's going to be hard. I guess it's a signature piece this year. It's going to be Cruz, 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 as long as the values just keep going as low as they're going. Oh, Volpe for nothing. $8, that's disrespect. But it's opportunity cost. Can you trust Volpe at shortstop the whole season? Or do you need to be up here with a little bit more power speed? Do you need to be up here for premiums? I don't know who's going to be better than those two. It's 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 unknown, but so is baseball. is an unknown situation. Jackson Merrill, I'm hearing a little hype on. I'll have to check out. 
story, you see the bottom falls out and you get guys for free, you just kind of plug it in. So it's a battle over the top players, the elite players. Did I not do outfield? I just want to see where a story Ruiz went. How low? Because what's Ruiz going for in money? Langford for three. That's not going to happen. Oh, you know what? I didn't go through outfield. You see it now. Just those outfielders are on the top of the list. I got you. Let's do these outfielders because there's a lot of them. So, Ronald, Julio, we talked about the top. Tucker, Soto, Judge, Jordan, outfield eligible, exciting, Robert. For only 30? Mm, okay, probably my number one. So could Michael Harris. I think Michael's rise. I think Michael is so much more exciting than Randy. I, I want to be Michael on these guys. I don't want to be an Adolis' downslide. He, man, that is just not enough for me. It's just... Just gonna keep tempting me with Nolan Jones this year. Am I gonna have am I just gonna keep going with this love affair? A love affair with Nolan Jones. Mike Trout going for nothing. Just a nice signature piece this year. I could probably sneak Mike Trout on. That Harper Trout, Harper Trout stack, Harper going for so much more. There's Schwarbs. Yelich. Wow. First a little bit of steals. I think this is where I think this is where it got a little dicey, a little legacy, these four picks here before finally getting over to Lane Carter. And there's a story, all the speed you could ever ask for for $10. Tiasker, Jordan Walker getting pushed up. I think Sega is going to be better this year, but I don't know how much. Said Mole, probably mouse back. Cheerio, any word? You know, I, I think, why, so Wyatt is still the guy doesn't matter what the prices are here. Jumping to Wyatt anytime you get bored, fourth, third, fourth, fifth, 50 picks in, not wanting to miss out there, then coming back for Churio, because it's hard to tell if Churio is the guy I want him to be. But I'm more sure about Wyatt going later. Eloy with outfield designation. Very cute in your outfield. Very cute for power. JD plays outfield. Very cute for $2. So you got to make room. What What are the three outfielders? Are you going to play five outfielders, push them into your UT? Have a plan to push all those guys out. Dalton Varsho. So you've seen the guys here. So that, that pretty much just a first look at pricing. A first look at talking a little bit about upside. You got to keep up with how many pitchers are going down everywhere each week. Closers getting hurt. We're getting a little closer to the season. I want to do a salary cap on here so that I can lay out a ladder and, and kind of show you a technique that I think emerges. I've got another pod. It was on RotoWire listening to an auction draft strategy expert, it's sort of understanding what the automatic what the baseline is. And if I were to just tee up a little bit more of it, is that there's evolutions to salary cap. In the very beginning, first, you know, you're first to the door. You've been doing salary cap first. You're introducing other guys to salary cap. Know your league a little bit better. That's all it took. Know your rules better. And your salary cap is going to, go well for you. You're going to be able to price, you're going to be able to buy better than the league because Snake was allowing guys to be lazy. You could just take a guy off the top of the list, kind of unfold it for you. No one could really get out ahead. Everyone, it was already balanced. So you were protected by the balance, but you're not protected in salary cap. You could go home with all your money in $1 picks if you don't get out and buy something. So that rattles, guys. There's adrenaline. you got to get the juices flowing. It's aggressive. You know, salary Snake is just, oh, it's your turn to pick. Oh, excuse me, so would you like to pick next? Okay, it's your turn to pick. And so I have it's so it's it's much more alert. It's much more, there's much more intensity to it. And I've always known that there's ways to like break this. And and why, what are the dynamics? What is the variation of nomination order? How how money moves in the draft and knowing that there's more to it. 
So a couple years ago, a few years ago, we were just the only ones doing this. And now, you know, eventually it will just replace Snake. And everything I'm saying would be totally trivial. I don't know, but we still got a little edge. And I'm still trying to find that edge. Is living late, you know. I mean, it was a trick to say, keep $3 and make sure you're getting pick of the litter on $1 picks. Everyone's doing that. So now it's three, four, five. Now everyone's waiting late. And you're seeing some sub strategies emerge. You're seeing guys that hold money and then want to live in the middle. You're seeing the late hold, late big stack, and how much they're able to take, how guys want to build their teams. They're they're getting they're going against that expensive high-end player because they want to make deeper teams. So now that that's everyone in your league knows that. Now you have another example where guys are ready. They know to live late. They know how to get their money in. And, and you've been doing this with the same guys. So now you know each other's tendencies. So tendencies is another big problem. And that takes an evolution to work through being more deceptive. How to let people know what you want and what you don't want. Hanging people up, pushing people off stuff that they want. So I kind of evolved through some strategies of how to stay busy, how to how to keep how to use the target that's on your back to keep people off of you to punish them. You know, and most of that is staying busy and putting money in the draft. And I think I have another opportunity cost strategy to salary cap that I want to unveil. But I don't just want to describe it. I want to do a full salary cap on here. So I think I'm going to do that. The season's coming up quick. I got it a draft. We're looking at a draft in two days. I want to get an end. I want to get a big money league in just for the first time. Just try it. Maybe throw that on here. So let's get ready to pivot. Let's get ready to do a draft. Let me get some teams. I'm going to go on here. Basically with what we said about this, about these drafts. Look at RP. What I'm doing. I didn't even look at catcher. Is that disrespectful? Devin, gone. Who else? Is anyone else hurt? Yeah. Not sure. Evan Phillips. So the closers, you never know what they're going to go for. You can't go by that. But I'll, I'll build a ladder. We'll go in here. We'll set up some strategies. We'll implement them. And I'll stack a team up on a salary cap. Big shout out to all the subscribers. Welcome into the new subscribers. We had to get gritty. Fantasy baseball is about to begin.